Number 15. Sulfuric acid is manufactured by a series of reactions represented by the following equations. And then they give these three equations here. But the question that we have to answer is, they say, draw the Lewis structure, predict the molecular geometry by Vesper, and determine the hybridization of sulfur for the following. And in this case, we have to do all of that for the SO3 molecule. Okay, so did we really need to know these three reactions? No, all we just have to do is take SO3, draw the Lewis structure, predict the geometry, and determine the hybridization. Now, it's a good thing they said determine, you know, or draw the Lewis structure, because if they just ask for a molecular geometry or a hybridization, the easiest way to go about this is to always draw the Lewis structure first. So, this will be a quick inversion of how to draw Lewis structure because there's a different playlist on this channel that goes step by step into how to draw Lewis structures. So this one will kind of be kind of like, you know, let's just see if your answer matches mine. So we have SO3, the least electronegative goes in the middle and between sulfur and oxygen, sulfur is less electronegative. So sulfur in the middle surrounded by three oxygens. So one, two, and three. Just kind of make it as symmetrical as you can. And now let's put the valence electrons. Oxygen and sulfur, they're in the same group. They're in both in group 16 or 6A, but the lucky number is six here because they both have six valence electrons. So I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six for sulfur. And then I'll do one, two, three, four, Three, four, five, six for the oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Everybody gets a single bond first and then checks for the octet rule. And if I can just connect the dots properly, there we go. This one's a little long, but that's okay. Okay, so this oxygen doesn't have the octet yet. It has two four, six, seven electrons. So that means that I have to double bond. So one dot to one dot, that's cool. The same thing with this oxygen. I need that double bond to get the oxygen to have an octet. And I need to make the final bond here. Oh my God, what kind of bond is that? That's better, to get the octet down here. And sulfur, remember sulfur can have an expanded octet and it could have a max of 12 electrons, and that's what it has here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So we're good. First part is done. Now we just have to predict the molecular geometry, and the molecular geometry always comes from the central atom. So in this case, we're just looking at sulfur and what's going on. Well, it seems like the sulfur is bound to three oxygens, so it has three bonding sites or just, you know, three elements that it's bound to. And this sulfur has no lone pairs, right? I don't see a lone pair next to sulfur. I can't count these because these are not sulfur's lone pairs. So when I run through in my mind all my molecular geometries, all of these should pop up. Chances are your teacher or professor won't, uh, maybe they want you to memorize your geometries. So... I just put it here just to show you that you're looking for a central atom. In this case, it's, a, it's an A surrounded by three uh, oxygens. In here, they're represented by X and with no lone pairs in the middle. And it doesn't matter whether it's a single bond or a triple bond, but you will pick this one, right? This one has the A in the middle surrounded by the three Xs and the A has no lone pairs. So this is trigonal planar. Okay, two out of three. The, so that's the molecular geometry. Maybe I will just do this. And now we got to find out the hybridization. All right. Hybridization, they told us specifically of sulfur. So that's good. And now there's a list of five different hybridizations, right? Ranging from sp to sp3d2. These are just the names of the orbitals that will overlap when they form your bonds, right? Your sigma and pi bonds. But when you're trying to memorize hybridization, it's easiest to just memorize how many letters there are here. 
So for example, sp3 has one s and three p's. That's p3. There's a total of four letters here. sp2, there's a total of three letters because it's an s and two p's. And just know that those total letters equal the number of things that are around the element that you're talking about. In this case, it's sulfur. And one thing is either one single bond, that's one thing. One double bond is also one thing. Just because it has two lines does not make it two things. Same thing with the triple bond. One whole triple bond is one thing, and a lone pair is also one thing. So what's going on around the sulfur? Well, it's got one double bond, that's one thing. Doesn't matter that it's got two lines, it's one thing. Another double bond, that's two things total. Another double bond, that's three things total. And do I have any lone pairs around the sulfur? No, I don't see any dots. And just like we said before, I can't use these dots because they're not, you know, they're not part of sulfur, they're part of oxygen. So I only have three things. So three things, three letters, you got it. It's SP2. That's the one that has the total of three letters. And there's your hybridization. Okay, we're done with this. What'd you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. I believe in you. Good luck on your tests and quizzes, and I'll be talking to you soon. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.